Welcome, one and all, to another top five from your friends at Bike Radar. We all know everyone loves to upgrade their bikes. We also know everyone loves a bargain. So, here are five cheap upgrades to make your mountain bike life that little bit better. And before we get on with the show, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that little bell icon so that every time we upload a video, you get a notification. We've said it before, and we'll no doubt say it again, one of the best upgrades you can do to any mountain bike is to run your wheels tubeless. If you're not familiar with the system, it means removing those puncher-prone inner tubes and replacing them with some latex-based sealant. There are two main benefits. The tubeless system can be run at lower pressures, which crucially improves grip, and in some cases, rolling resistance. Secondly, the latex sealant inside a tubeless tyre does a much better job of preventing and sealing punctures than regular tubes. So, what do you need to buy? Well, these days, the majority of tyres and rims are ready to go tubeless. Tyres will almost certainly mention it on the sidewall, and most rims can be converted if they're not ready to go. You may well need some tubeless tape, a pair of tubeless valves, and some sealants. A safe bet is Stans, or Dot Blue from Schwalbe, as it's basically the same stuff. Around £40 or $50 should be enough for the full conversion. Contact points may feel like less exciting upgrades, but as you spend nearly all of your riding life connected to your grips and saddle, we think they're well worth it if you get the chance. They're both very personal items, so while we can make some recommendations, it's worth thinking about what works for you before dropping some cash. Grips can be thick or thin, hard or soft, sticky or not, and what works for someone else might not work for you. This means thicker, softer grips might suit those looking to kill as much trail buzz as possible, while thinner grips suit those with smaller hands or people trying to get the maximum feel through their bars. Personally, we'd look for lock-on grips that won't spin on the bars, or ESI silicon grips if you want the lightest possible setup. Saddles are another highly personal item, and while you can spend mega bucks getting the lightest model, rest assured budget versions usually have exactly the same shape, with the main difference coming down to weight and exotic materials. Here at Bike Radar, we found specialised and fabric saddles have a great mix of performance and price. Plus, shops will often let you try a demo model before you buy. A great pair of tyres might not be the absolute cheapest upgrade, but they're certainly one of the most worthwhile. Getting your tyres right can completely change your bike from a sketchy, uninspiring ride to one which lets you hit gnarlier lines with the utmost of confidence. First, you need to decide what type of tyre you're looking for. Something for dry and fast conditions, all-rounders, or wet and muddy trails. Then, make sure you know what size to go for. Don't go big if your rims aren't particularly wide, and don't go narrow if your rims are super chunky. Next is to consider what compound and carcass you want. Softer compounds give more grip, but roll slower. However, we reckon it's a payoff usually worth having. Triple compound tyres are pricier, but tend to perform better. And if you can't afford a pair, prioritise the front wheel first. More durable, stronger carcasses also tend to cost more, but can help prevent punctures. Don't go downhill tough if you're a trail rider, as they'll weigh a lot more and might dull the ride feel a little. Our top tip for picking tyres? It's almost always worth getting the absolute best you can afford, and the more you spend, the better they usually are. Getting fit is likely to be the cheapest of the bunch. That's unless you go and drop a chunk of cash on a personal trainer or coach. However, there's no denying that being fitter simply makes riding bikes way more fun. And, if you're smart about it, the process of getting there doesn't need to be an ordeal either. Being stronger means you're able to ride more, and hurt less. This also has the side benefit of making your riding buddies have to push that little bit harder to keep up. We've tried a mix of methods here at Bike Radar, from always going that extra lap to adding some sprints in throughout your ride. With consistency, small changes like this can really add up over time. But we're not qualified coaches, so if you want to get fitter, there's plenty of free resources online to give you the tips you need when getting started. Refreshing your cables and fluids may seem boring, but remember, the more you ride your bike, the more tired they become, which slowly degrades your shifting performance. While it is possible to remove the inner cables from the outers and give them a quick wipe down, a new set of inners and outers is low cost, and, once fitted, is the bicycle equivalent of popping on fresh bedsheets. Crisp, smooth and silky, 
We're talking about the shifting now, not the bed sheets. It's what you'll find when you swap your old Haggard cables for some new ones. While you're at it, give your brakes a quick bleed as well. This should get them back to that pin sharp feeling they had when new. A bleed kit may cost a little more than fresh cables, but you'll be able to keep your brakes in tip top condition for years to come. What do you think to our list? Do you have any upgrade recommendations of your own? As always, let us know in the comments, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon so that every time we upload a new video, you get a notification. Thank you.